all I print is PETG. I like mirrors for that with hairspray. I have a mirror that is broken. It took a chunk out of it, and that's because I was doing something I knew I shouldn't be doing, and I was printing without hairspray on the glass, and at times PETG can take a chunk out of the glass when you do that. I've had this mirror using hairspray for about a year now with no issues whatsoever. And about the third print I ran on it without any hairspray, I lost a chunk of the mirror. I needed to make another one, so I figured I'd just show a video on how I go about doing that. And if you stick around to the very end, I'll show you how I get by without using bed clips. So if you'll stick around to the end of the video, I'll show you that. But on this video, I'm gonna show you how to cut your glass and how to remove any sharp edges and corners and also engrave a number onto the glass so I know which printer it goes to. This is the type of glass cutter I'm using. The glass cutter has a carbide roller on the end of it. And you don't actually cut all the way through the glass with it, you just score it. You score the top of the glass. And it's best to do this in a continuous motion and I did not do that as you can tell. It didn't affect anything but ideally you'd want to go a continuous path without pausing or interrupting the cut. Now I'm putting my straight edge under the score line. I'm using that to elevate the end that I want to break slightly above my work surface. That way I can put some pressure on it and it will fall down and shear that piece of glass off. You may have noticed I used my old glass as a straight edge for breaking that piece of the new mirror off. Wood would probably be a much better choice that way when I bop it with my fist there it's not going to break itself i could have broke that mirror i wasn't too worried about it but wood would probably be a much better choice in that situation i'm just repeating that same process for the second cut i'm leaving two of the factory edges and then i'll have two cut edges and i'll show you how i clean those up on the next part i have a diamond wheel chucked up in this rotary tool i'm using if you do not have any diamond cutoff wheels i'd highly recommend getting some because they are infinitely better than the fiber discs they last a lot longer they don't break the way the fiber discs break and they're really inexpensive especially when you consider how long they last so if you have a rotary tool i would highly recommend getting these for a lot of other reasons than what I'm gonna show here. But the diamonds actually run inward of the cutting edge quite a ways, so you can also use it to grind with. I use this to grind down any sharp corners. I put a little radius on each corner so they don't poke into things or yourself. And also hold the, the wheel at about a 45 degree angle to the top and bottom edges to knock those down. Give them a little chamfer so that they don't cut. And I will run it up and down the sides or the edges that I cut to smooth those out a little bit to grind them down some so they're not sharp or jagged anywhere. And the factory edges I don't do a whole lot to other than rounding the corners off. The factory edges are already polished and they're not sharp. So there's really not any need to do any kind of work to those. After I chamfer off the corners of the sides, then I go up and down each side that I cut to kind of even it out and smooth it out a little bit so there's not any surprises or snags that you're going to catch your fingers on or anything while you're handling the plates. Then I clean off the sharpie I used to outline my original build plate. I clean that off with a little bit of acetone 
or nail polish remover with acetone in it it'll take that sharpie right off the glass i have seven printers so i number the corners of each one so i know what printer it goes to that way if i take multiple build plates off for some reason and want to clean them or anything like that i get the build plate back to the printer that it came off of when the bed was level because i do manual bed leveling i really don't have any problems like a lot of people do with manual bed leveling i use stiffer spray and I don't have to touch my beds ordinarily unless I change something. If I were to change a hot end or a nozzle or do some other kind of major adjustment to the wheels or something like that, at that point I would need to go back and re-level. Otherwise, I really don't re-level my bed. So in order to help with that, I have each mirror marked for what printer it goes to. So I'm just engraving the number three in the bottom left-hand corner of this plate and putting a circle around it and that's how i identify what machine it goes to here's the tip i promised you i do not print at extreme speeds i use petg i use large diameter nozzle 0.8 millimeter thick layers 0.4 millimeters so i can't really print at high speeds on this printer anyway it's an ender 3 it's not really designed for high speeds although I know you can modify them and get them to do it. I printed about 50 millimeters a second on PETG, but laying down those types of layers and, and the wide lines, the prints go really quick on it. But I don't like dealing with bed clips, and I found that if you can find really thin silicone sheets, the ones I have under here are fiberglass reinforced sheets, and they're about half a millimeter thick. I have to increase my bed temperature a little bit, I usually print PTG at 70 using bed clips, uh, using the silicone sheets instead of bed clips. I have to increase my bed temperature to about 80 degrees Celsius. These silicone sheets are not slick. They're kind of tacky feeling. They feel sticky and stuff sticks to them, dust or anything else. So before I put them down, I wash them off really good and make sure they're clean so nothing's causing me any kind of issues under the mirrors but they're tacky enough and the mirror has enough weight that they don't slide around at the speeds that I print at. The mirrors stay put, they don't move, I don't have any problems with layer shifting or anything like that because the mirror is moving. They really just stay put. So that's something you might want to try if you're using glass or if you're using mirrors to print on and they, they have a little bit of weight to them. You might want to see if you can find you some sheets like these and this was a, a really big one that was a stove top cover, but I cut it down to size and one sheet of this stuff was enough to do all six of my Ender 3s that I own. I have a CR-10 that I have not put a sheet under yet because I need to get some more material in order to do that. But I've been really happy with this. I've been testing these for a long time. I started out on one printer and then I added it to another. And now I have all six of my Ender 3s running these sheets. I have not run into any issues at all. Again, I'm not printing at over 100 millimeters a second or anything like that. So if you are printing at those speeds, then it might be an issue. I don't know. I haven't tried it. But that's the tip I promised you about possibly being able to get rid of some bed clips if you're using something with a little weight to it. You might want to give that a shot.